Welcome to a new in the mail, the first of many to come for 2024, so let's get this started with a 24 pin ATX power supply on off switch. So you have an ATX power supply that you're connecting to drive something that needs a little more power. You will need to use a paper clip or something like that on the 24 pin connector to give it the on off signal by bridging two pins. That's kind of inconvenient if you're doing it, you know, multiple times a day, it's prone to error, it may cause a short circuit. So these things exist. Uh, it has the uh, required connector to plug into the um, ATX power supply, the 24 pin connector, and it has this nice on off switch, which makes everything neat and tidy. But why does it have a uh, third wire, you might ask? Well, this particular model also contains an LED inside the switch, which is wired to one of the 12 volt pins uh, that powers up after you turn on the ATX PSU. So this will also signal visually that the power supply is on, which again is very neat. I got a bunch of these because I'm working on a project that involves using ATX power supplies, so I'll need all of these. As usual, links for all of the products shown in this video will be placed in the description of the video. Next up, I thought it was interesting to pick this up. It's a form of cable sleeving, but it's the nylon, uh, soft nylon braided type, so it can turn a pretty boring wiring job into one that looks very professional. This is marked as polyamide cable sleeve, so that's likely the material. I don't think it's uh, heat resistant, so if you're going to apply heat to this, you, you can see it will start to melt. It will probably also curl up. I don't think it's in any way heat shrinkable. You will have to pick the right size to fit your uh, cables. And it, it does, you know, expand a little bit due to the weaving when you insert the cable, but you really have to pick the right size. And what I have here is uh, 10 millimeter and 16 millimeter width. So you'll likely need to go for the wider diameter ones just to make sure it will fit your cable. The sponsor of this video is PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. From two layers to advanced multi-layer flex rigid PCBs, PCBWay will have you covered. You could also try the new module store on their website where by using bonus points or cash, you can purchase a great variety of electronic modules and related tools. Check out their website link below. Next up, I have two types of mains voltage neon lamps. The first ones are green light and are installed in this uh, panel mount uh, type of case where you can drill a round hole in your front panel and screw this in. For sure, it has the required resistor inside this enclosure. The uh, second type are these uh, glass bead ones which you have to wire yourself and these come in a few different color options. I have here green and red. And to give you a better idea of how these look, I have wired one of each to this uh, mains plug. So here they are in their full, uh, slightly dim glory. I thought this might be useful for whenever I need the mains powered presence indicator or if I ever build a test fixture for my underfloor heating multi-channel valve controller board. Um, these are very cheap, so well worth keeping them around. Next, for the same reason uh, mentioned earlier, a potential test jig for the valve controller board, I was thinking of a simple way of simulating the valves. So the valves in question are typically just a resistive heater that heats up a wax cartridge that expands opening or closing the valve. And they behave mostly like a PTC thermistor, meaning they will have a lower resistance initially, pulling a higher current of hundreds of milliamps, maybe for a couple of milliseconds, then they will increase their resistance as they heat up, pulling less and less current over time. Now, a PTC thermistor like this one can potentially act like a fuse towards the end, breaking the connection completely or uh, in a resettable fashion. So, in theory, this should be a good model for the actual valve to test the board. Now, I found these PTC thermistors on AliExpress. They are rated as 2 to 3K resistance. Of course, you don't get a data sheet, so I'll have to run some tests. In theory, they start at 2K room temperature at 230 volts. That's 150 milliamps, which is fine for my testing purposes, but that also means 26 watts. And the size of these worries me because they don't look like they could dissipate 26 watts unless their resistance increases very quickly, limiting the current. And then what worries me again is if these are tripping like a fuse or not, 
or if the resistance just goes very high so the current goes very low so i'll have to check that and some magic mode might escape in the process but if you're interested in these no-name ptcs check the links in the description of the video next up i have a few different uh, crimpable n-type rf connectors some on some are 90 degrees some are straight uh, these are compatible with the LMR400 type of cable and uh, its thickness. You will need a crimp tool to do these connectors and I have purchased uh, such a uh, tool locally. It's from uh, Hanlong Tools, model number HD106E. I believe this can uh, do these uh, crimps just fine. It's not a high quality tool but it doesn't look too bad either unfortunately no link for it as i purchased it locally and i don't need to crimp more than a couple of these per year so i can't justify a higher more expensive uh, higher quality more expensive tool i also have like a one meter long piece of uh, lmr 400 uh, cable to practice a crimp before i move on to do uh, the one that i really need to do on my lora gateway setup on the rooftop I also noticed there was a different type of connector available which although not adequately described and sold as such it seemed to me like it is a press fit connector uh, which makes a lot of sense i can definitely see this working you don't need a crimp tool anymore because the jacket of the connector um, is designed such as to press fit the cable into the connector now i haven't used this uh, so far and um, i don't know how good this is i'm not even sure i'm completely right about the press fit thing so i would definitely appreciate your help in the comments below let me know if you have used this type of connector before um, if it's truly a press fit and if it does the job for something that you just set and forget and you'll not move it for a long period of time next up i have a magnetic magsafe style connector but in a more rugged form factor if i can call it that way I mean it's not a little fiddly connector it's a big chunky metal thing unfortunately not a fully panel mount form factor because there is no you know specific threaded uh, screw mount on on this thing uh, i got the four pin variant and uh, this particular seller had four five and six pin variants as well as a two pin variant so you could very well use these for a usb connection at least up to usb 2.0 full speed maybe but above that i don't know it depends on the signal integrity because you will be breaking the impedance of the line through this anyway it felt like a really nice way of connecting something in a magsafe style to make it uh, nice and tidy you will need to over mold this with some plastic rubber or maybe some 3d printed case to go around it or just go with plain simple hot glue and heat shrink over it and i quite like the construction of this um, the connector is keyed so you can't connect it the wrong way around although for making it you know bulletproof i would it wouldn't hurt to design some logic and only turn on power after a connection has been securely established or at least limit the current temporarily the magnetic uh, suction is very strong on this uh, connector the pins feel quite solid and thick uh, and they're obviously uh, spring loaded on the inside part so i'm liking this i can recommend trying it out the seller is giving a rating of 12 volts and 10 amps for the two pin version which has this thick middle pin and presumably the metal jacket is the second signal now for the four pin version that i had I, I have here i think the rating is one amp per contact which seems very reasonable and probably comes from the uh, ratings of the pogo pin contact check out the link below for this product next up i have a female 12 volt cigarette lighter socket and the reason for getting this is to use it in my cigarette lighter plug test by popular request in the comments people want to see me test the 12 volt cigarette lighter plugs that they purchased recently some are rated for uh, more than 10 amps and i'm curious to see if they can really handle that safely without melting I have also ordered an original VW socket spare part because this is another weak part in the test setup. The female socket might melt as well, just doesn't look like it could hold a lot of current and this one having a USB type A attached to it, I don't know, it just doesn't express a lot of confidence. It's like, I'm, I'm not even sure of what this does, it's like a boost step up converter, you plug it into a USB 5 volts and 
it gives you 12 volts here or is it like a quick charge decoy where you plug it into 12 volts quick charge capable uh, adapter and just triggers that to output 12 volt of this in any case doesn't look like this could hold maybe not more than a couple of amps not much else i can say about this other than we'll see which one survives in the test video coming up soon so stay subscribed for that next up i have some uh, cable organizer clips i found these uh, horizontal ones to be uh, quite interesting because it allows you to neatly run a bunch of uh, parallel wires let me see how do these open up like so so this will allow you to run a bunch of uh, parallel wires to help you do cable management for example a couple of months ago i designed and 3d printed a very similar design to do some cable management inside my uh, multimedia box at my apartment which holds my internet tv smart home things that's still a work in progress where i'm mostly working every few months for an hour or two when i can find the spare time but just so you are aware these are ready-made ones which can also do the trick and the ones i designed used friction to keep the cable in place these ones just have a nice clip that opens and closes over the cable section i also got a few of these uh, plastic clips uh, the type that you secure into a hole inside an enclosure or electrical panel stuff like that i've used mostly adhesive clips uh, because you do need some back panel distance to be able to insert these talking about the adhesive backed ones those can be installed anywhere but unless you get the really high quality ones with original 3m um, double-sided tape they will come undone after some time depending on the environment but the clip like this which has been secured uh, in place mechanically uh, this will hold up for much more well i was on a shopping spree for uh the over the holidays i also picked up one of these compact keychain measuring tapes i already have a similar one which is very handy here in the office but now i got a second one which i keep at home and i find these to be very handy you need to know if a specific kitchen appliance fits in a given space you grab the pocket tape measure which extends up to two meters and you measure it it's quick and simple and elegant it's inexpensive so grab a couple of them they will come in handy in the office or home space and the link to this will be provided in the description below check it out next up i have this 35 millimeter din rail universal clip so it's just a small compact plastic clip because from the pictures it looked like this is metal but no this is just the plastic uh, backing with a number of three countersunk uh, holes these two ones are 18 millimeter apart 3.2 millimeter in diameter the clip is about 60 millimeters long with 18 millimeters wide and uh, you can pretty much use this for attaching anything to a din rail you just screw this to the back of an item and voila you've got a din rail mountable whatever i thought this might come in handy one day so I just ordered one next up i want to show you this um, water sealing mastic tape and uh, this one in particular is from this company called uh, Cotran and the part number is KC80 uh, it's 51 millimeters wide it's about a three meter long section in here with uh, 1.65 millimeter thickness and I'm, although I'm sure they probably make this in other sizes as well and I've discovered this particular product because it was included in the Rack Wireless Gateway installment box to help with waterproofing the antenna connection. This stuff was really nice to install, soft, easy, stretchable, but without tearing, a pleasure to work with. And I quickly used up the available length, so I went to my local electrical supply shop to get more, and they gave me some local brand uh, that wasn't nearly as nice to work with. It was really hard to stretch and install, so that's why i opted to order another roll of this specific brand and part number because of the positive experience i've had with it so if you need to do some waterproofing i recommend you get some of this and here is a pro tip i received from a friend put some teflon tape first on the thing that you plan to waterproof with this because once you install it and it sets in place you're not going to remove it anymore uh, it's really difficult to do that and if you do it for example to a coaxial cable to an n-type connector feeding an antenna maybe at some point you plan to go there and replace the antenna or do some maintenance and if you have the teflon tape in place on the first layer you can just 
cut out the waterproofing rubber tape which probably hardens up over time and you're just left with a clean surface over the connector and coaxial cable. My next item is this uh, DRV8871H bridge uh, driver module and this is like a very popular H bridge driver chip from TI it can do up to 50 volts uh, 3.6 amps it has integrated current sensing and current limit availability and you just control it with a couple of PWM inputs now this tiny breakout board just makes it easy to interface it uh, for a quick test a project an idea you have and I recently had to wire up a specific DC motor based valve that needed the polarity to be reversed to go the other way and instead of just designing my own H-Bridge PCB I just ordered a few of these because it was simple and elegant also cheap next up I uh, since I've started doing some outdoor installations with the LoRa gateway project I grabbed a few of these breather valves and uh, they're just above what I would call cheap on AliExpress but I thought that might come in handy at some point I don't have a lot of experience with outdoor installations I'm not really sure when one of these is really required maybe you can drop a comment below on this topic if you have experience with such things for example the electrical box that I used to uh, put the LoRa gateway inside in a previous video has a seal and IP65 rate but it also has four mounting holes that I drilled and installed to the wall uh, it certainly can breathe through the tiny tolerances between the hole and the screw holding it on the, on the wall so I don't think it needs a breather valve but maybe there are other types of enclosures and scenarios where you might have like a pressure sensor inside the really really uh, tightly enclosed um, case and in that, in that case you want to measure the outside pressure well this type of valve is going to help with that while keeping the water out next up I have some mechanic brand UV curable solder mask this is for repair purposes it comes in a syringe in liquid form but it hardens once exposed to a particular UV light wavelength I didn't have any red and yellow so recently I did some PCBs in red and yellow solder mask for a client these needed some mods after they've been uh, assembled and it just looks much nicer and cleaner when you use the actual solder mask color to cover the bodge or mod on the PCB and I think I'm also missing black uh, UV curable solder mask so I think I should order a tube of that as well next I got this type of uh, tablet wall mount which can clip into place and keep a tablet or a Wi-Fi router mounted on a wall or furniture item and the story is that recently I installed this tablet dashboard to serve like a universal dashboard for my smart home system based on home assistant um, to show some security camera feeds and provide various controls and I wanted something that looks nice because I'm gonna see it every day after I install it after a bit of research I crossed 3d printing off my list just because it wouldn't look nice and I found this nice cheap clip it's a simple uh, mechanism so it has to slide in here and then rotate for locking it in place it's not perfect but it's near perfect and it looks very elegant because you can't see it at all it's totally covered behind the tablet um, but it also has some downsides because uh, now it creates this you know one about one centimeter gap between the uh, wall surface and the tablet so if you press on the corners of the tablet and with this being in the middle there will be some bending and movement in the tablet so it's not as solid I think I can fix this by introducing some 3d printed wedges spacers uh, so that the tablet cannot move back uh, towards the wall when it's pushed on its corners the other downside is that because of this uh, slide and uh, twist mechanism the tablet does have you know a bit of play in it due to the weight of the tablet so it doesn't keep it perfectly locked in place but again adding some 3d printed spacers on the back of the tablet might solve uh, this issue too oh and I did not trust the uh, included uh, double-sided uh, tape I purchased separately these ones uh, which were labeled as original 3m VHB tape now original original or not these felt very strong when I attached uh, one of these circles to the back of my tablet it made a really strong connection and I could probably recommend getting ones that are slightly smaller in diameter than the ones I got uh, just so you don't have to cut around it or you can simply not cut at all because it's just not going to be seen on the back of the tablet 
on the wall side uh, the clip can be secured uh, by using these two screws so it, it's a really secure connection on the wall side nothing to worry about there and I think we'll stop here for today as this video is already long enough and it's probably already made a dent in your budget thank you for watching don't forget to smash that like button and leave a comment below to let me know if you ordered any of the items shown here I'll be seeing you next time